This is going to be an overview of the minor prophet Amos. Amos was a herdman of Tekoa, and he prophesied in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos was just an average guy, just a common boy farmer, but he was willing to be sent, and God gave him wisdom that would make him wiser than the big shot kings of his day, just like he would give you if you get in the book and seek him, he'll give you wisdom. You'll be wiser than the big shot people of your day. You'll be wiser than the presidential candidates. You'll find that uh, most big shot people in the world have zero wisdom. And the people that have the wisdom are the people that get in the Bible and read it and go by what it says. But in chapters 1 through 2, you have the judgment of God on the Gentile nations and on Israel. And the Lord has gotten Israel through so much, but they continue to rebel. Amos 2, 9 says, Yet destroyed I the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above, and his roots from beneath. So the Bible mentions giants with the height like cedars, like a tree, and strong as the oaks. But yet these giants are no match for the Lord. It says, Yet I destroyed his fruit from above and his roots from beneath. So when Israel faced the giants, the Lord brought them through it, but they still didn't cherish his words. They still didn't choose God over their false gods. Amos 2.12, But ye gave the Nazarites wine to drink, and commanded the prophets, saying, Prophesy not. So they said, No more preaching. They didn't want to hear the word of God. They didn't want to get on Sermon Audio or GoodPreaching.com or on YouTube. All they would have in was motivational speakers with the wrong Bible, most likely. Amos 2, 14 through 16. Therefore, the flight shall perish from the swift, and the strong shall not strengthen his force. Neither shall the mighty deliver himself. Neither shall he stand that handleth the bow. And he that is swift of foot shall not deliver himself. Neither shall he that rideth the horse deliver himself. And he that is courageous among the mighty shall flee away naked in that day, saith the Lord. So these big shots, the mighty men, they're going to run away with their tail between their legs when they see Jesus Christ coming back with his eyes as a flame of fire, coming down on a white horse and stomping the blood up to the horse's bridles. The mighty men are going to run away naked in that day. The courageous among them, among the mighty. In chapter 3, you have a great question asked. In Amos 3.3, 3, it says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? No. Uh, you, you can't say you walk with God when you don't agree. Somebody told me homosexuality was okay. I said, what about adultery? What about incest, bestiality, and stealing? Well, they said, well, those things are wrong. I said, the same Bible that says, Adultery, incest, bestiality is wrong. It says homosexuality is wrong. He said, well, I just don't see that homosexuality could be wrong if they love each other. But this man obviously doesn't agree with God. How could two walk together except they be agreed? He's not walking with God. Every time he opened the Bible and it said something against homosexuality, uh, God's going one way and he's going another way. They're not walking together. Why would you say adultery, incest, and bestiality is wrong, and then say homosexuality is okay. When in the same chapter, Leviticus 18 says all four of those things are wrong. So why would you say one of them is right? Who is it that determines what's right? Is it you and your mind, or is it the Bible? Is it your government, or is it the Bible? You can't go by your mind because in some people's mind, it's not wrong to murder. You can't go by the government all the time because there's corrupt government. There's only one pure thing in the world. That's the word of God. That's what you have to go by. And 
if you go by the Bible, then you and the Lord are walking together and you're agreed. Amos 3.3, 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? In chapter 4, you have defiance of God's judgment. Sometimes wicked people are too tough for their own good. Even though God punished them, they stay in their sin. In Amos 4, 4, it says, Come to Bethel and transgress. And this is the Lord kind of being sarcastic here, telling them, you know, come to Bethel and transgress. At Gilgal, multiply transgression. Bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes after three years and offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven and proclaim and publish the free offerings. For this liketh you, O ye children of Israel, said the Lord God. So he's saying, you know, come on to Bethel, transgress. Continue in your sin that you're doing. Continue bringing these sacrifices and your tithes even though you're sinning. You see, he's not he's not satisfied with their tithing and their uh, sacrifices when all they're doing is seeking after false gods and in defiance. In Amos 4.12, it says, Therefore thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I would do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. All that is going to matter one day is if you are prepared to meet God are unprepared to meet God because you're going to be standing in front of the one who made everything. He made you and he can break you. And he's the one in Amos 4.13, it says, For lo, he that formeth the mountains and createth the wind and declareth unto man what is his thought that maketh the morning darkness and treadeth upon the high places of the earth. The Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. And in chapter 5, Amos tells the people how they can stay alive. Amos 5, 4, For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. If you want to stay alive, seek the Lord. Romans eight thirteen, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. So the more you live for the flesh, you're just shaving off years of your life i mean think about it the more you drink you're shaving off years of your life i mean it's doing bad things to your body anyway the more you smoke pot killing more brain cells shaving off years of your life the more you commit fornication the more likely you're going to get a std you're shaving off you, if you live for the flesh you shall die but seek the lord and you shall live there are going to be billions of people that don't seek him. And when he comes back at the second coming, it will be darkness and not light. Amos 5.18, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. And that's what the Lord gives them is darkness. John 3.19, And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. So they love darkness, so that is what the Lord gives them at his coming. They love blood, so the Lord comes and brings out the blood up to the horse's bridles. Amos 5, 21, 22, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them, neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. So some people, they want to live an unconfessed sin, and, and live for the devil, but still pretend to offer a sacrifice, or today you come to the altar at church, but yet you still live like you are lost during the week. That's what these people were doing, and so the Lord hates their feast days. He hates their solemn assemblies, and even though they offer him burnt offerings and meat offerings, he's not accepting them, and he's not regarding their peace offerings of their fat beasts. Because they're going after other gods. They're in rebellion even though they've been chastened. They're in rebellion even though God's got them through everything. So he's not accepting this stuff. You can do good things and if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, God just doesn't even acknowledge those good things. Some people want to live in unconfessed sin and still pretend to offer 
a, a sacrifice and pretend that God is just accepting it. Amos 5.23, Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. So these people were living so wicked that he didn't even want to hear them sing songs, sing praises to him. He didn't want to even hear that. And many people do that today. They live like the devil through the week. Then on Sunday, they get up, they sing a song, and praise to God. Amos 5.26, But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Chin, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. How are you going to sing to the Lord when you have all of these other false gods, like Moloch? Some people get up in church on Sunday and sing the songs of God and then put on the uh, most wicked song you can imagine in their car on the way home. And what you have today is watered down Christianity. People go to church and it appears that they're right with God. While someone may not be in church and be just as right or more right than the churchgoer. Going to church and singing a song doesn't mean anything if you don't live right through the week. In chapter 6, Amos says, Woe to those that are at ease in Zion. The Lord is going to raise up an enemy. In Amos 6.14 it says, But behold, I will raise up against you a nation. O, is o house of Israel, saith the Lord, the God of hosts, and they shall afflict you from the entering in of Hemoth into the river of the wilderness. When you start getting at ease and thinking you can do what you want, the Lord just might raise up an adversary against you to humble you and whip you back in line. And that's what he did many times in the Bible to Israel. In chapter 7, you see how Amos is a very negative preacher. In Amos seven eleven through 12, it says, For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go, flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread and prophesy there. Amaziah does not respond well to the negative preaching of Amos. He wants to hear someone speak smooth things. Isaiah 30, 9 through 10 says, that This is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. You see, the people today, even, they don't want preaching from the Bible. They want to be lied to. They want the preacher to be smooth. They want the president to be smooth and a liar and a fake. You see Joe Biden's speech, completely fake, claiming he's about unity. He's a liar. You see the people on the news. I just watched a man... Fake crying on the news. It was disgusting. Very disgusting. Uh, how does people not see that these things are fake? Amos seven thirteen through 16. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was an herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, Go, prophesy unto my people Israel. Now therefore hear thou the word of the Lord. Thou sayest, Prophesy not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. So Amos is telling Amaziah that this message is from the Lord. And by telling Amos to just shut up and go away, Amaziah is actually telling the Lord to shut up and go away because Amos is his messenger. And many times people hate the preacher, but who they really hate is God. And they hate what he has to say because the messenger is just giving them the message of God. But Amos continues with his very negative message. In Amos seven seventeen. it says, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Thy wife shall be an harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be divided by line. 
and thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. This is exactly how good preachers preach today. They say, get right with the Lord, or trouble is coming. They say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, or you're going to hell. They say, believe on Jesus Christ, or be left behind at the rapture, and face the time of Jacob's trouble. Get saved, or face the great white throne judgment, and be tossed into the lake of fire. Amos was a very negative preacher. So therefore, the people hated him, because he was telling them what was in their future. And what was in their future was judgment for their sin and their idolatry. Amos 8, 9, It shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. As Joel described it, when the Lord comes back at the second coming, it is a day of darkness and gloominess. Notice all the great preachers like Joel and Amos in the Bible preach on the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even Enoch, all the way back in the time of Genesis, when all that was going on, he said, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Amos 8, 11, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. You are so blessed that you have a King James Bible easily accessible 24 hours a day. You can read the Word of God anywhere. You can, you can read it at the doctor's office. You can read it while you're walking in the store. You can read it in a hotel. You know, the, the Bible is just available everywhere. Pretty much every doctor's office I go to, and I realize not everywhere will be like this, but every doctor's office I go to, there's a Bible right there on the table. Every time I go in a hotel, you see Bibles in the drawers. Everywhere you look, there's a Bible. You got the Bible on your phone. You got the Bible in your car, hopefully. You got the Bible in every room of your house. You are so blessed to have the King James Bible easily accessible 24 hours a day, yet you forsake to read the words. One of these days, that liberty could be taken away from you. Um, but like I said, Biden is saying he's going to bring unity and that he doesn't want any, any division. However, that, that, that means there will be unity as long as you don't go against his nonsense then there won't be unity if you do that. The Bible goes against his nonsense. The Bible is not for homosexuality, for the transsexual stuff, or the baby killing, or defunding the police, or taking guns. All that stuff is completely foolish, and you're foolish if you believe that he has your best interest at heart. And he's the type of person that would attempt to take away your freedom to read the Bible anytime you wanted to and to be able to put Bible-believing studies on YouTube and to watch Bible-believing studies on YouTube. I don't doubt it for a second that they just attempt to take all of the Bible-believing stuff off YouTube one day. I don't doubt it for a second. And I expect when it does happen, I expect that it's something... That happens overnight. But that's a that's just a horrible thing that could happen. But Amos closes out with some prophecies of the restoration of Israel and the millennial reign in chapter nine. In Amos nine eleven, it says, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. So chapter 9 
closes out, Amos closes out with some prophecies on the restoration of Israel and the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the millennial reign, that's when things are going to be perfect. You're going to have the perfect, sinless ruler sitting on the throne. He's going to have everybody's best interests at heart. He's going to know what's best for you. He's going to know what's best for everybody. And that's when perfect peace you're, it was, is going to be experienced. But other than that, you're not going to experience perfect peace today. It doesn't matter who the president is. You're not going to experience that until Jesus Christ comes back and sits on the throne in his kingdom. 